Good morning. Welcome to Lakeville United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Ed. I'm so glad to see you all here with us today. Before we begin, we do have just a few announcements to bring for the congregation. First, today is our Sunday Sunday Bar. Chance for us, after service, to get together, eat a lot of ice cream. Right? <laughs> so exciting. Be have a wonderful time of fellowship, time of celebration, and a time to get rid of all our ice cream before Lent starts. The Mary Magdalene Mission Circle will clean the church kitchen this Tuesday at 5.30 p.m. And speaking of Lent, Ash Wednesday service is here this Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. I hope you get to join us for Ash Wednesday this Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Game night will be Saturday at 7 p.m. Come play some games, play some euchre, and have some snacks. And the Linton study begins next Sunday during the Sunday school hour. We'll be looking into the Sermon on the Mount from Matthew 5 to 7. Chapters 5 to 7. So if you'd like to join us after Sunday, after Sunday worship, just head on down to the conference room. We'll meet together and have a wonderful time. And the food pantry suggests items for this week. Cereal, pancake mix, and syrup. So bring those items in, drop them off by the food pantry, drop them off at the office, and we'll make sure they go to people in need in our community. The enrollment for the 2023 and 2024 Little Ones Preschool is open to all Lakeville United Methodist Church families and current preschool families now. So if you'd like to enroll, contact Carlene. And that's all we have. Are there any other announcements to bring before the congregation? Well, if not, then I invite you to rise your able in body and spirit for our opening prayer. Wonderful God, we come here today to praise your holy name, to receive your spirit, to be filled with the joy that you bring, Lord. Lord, prepare our hearts so after today we can go forth from here and show your love to all. Be with us today in worship, and in your name we pray, now and always. Amen. I invite you to remain standing for our opening hymn, number 605. Wash, O God, our sons and daughters.
you join me in the call to worship? As God called to Moses from the mountain, we are called to be God's people. As Jesus called the disciples to climb with him to the peak of another mountain, we are called to follow wherever he leads. As the disciples stood in awe at the sound of God's voice, we are called to worship in wonder and praise. You may be seated. All right, at this time, I invite the kids to come forward for our children's sermon. Morning. Charmander? That's awesome. What do you have there, Alyssa? That's really pretty. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. How are you all doing today? Good? Okay, let me ask you a question. What does holiday mean? Do you know what a holiday is? A uh, day where you celebrate. Yeah, a day you celebrate. Now, we have a lot of holidays, don't we? We have Christmas, Easter, Fourth of July, Arbor Day. Easter's your birthday? Wow, that's awesome. Today, huh? Oh, okay. Today is a holiday in the church. Today, we celebrate what we call Transfiguration Sunday. Yep. You know what transfiguration means? No? Okay. Transfiguration means you change something. So, what was that? Like when you bake brownies, yeah. It's transfigured from this goop in a pan to a delicious brownie, right? So today we celebrate Transfiguration Sunday. And it reminds us of this episode in the Gospels. Jesus went up a mountain and he took his three best friends, Peter, James, and John. And they went up to the mountain, and there, Scripture tells us, Jesus was transfigured. And that doesn't mean Jesus became a pan of brownies, right? No. No. Jesus was not a pan of brownies. That's not theologically accurate. So, he, he probably would eat brownies, yeah. Huh? He brought brownies. Really? You brought brownies? That's awesome. In real life. The church requested it. That's awesome. So, Jesus was transfigured. What that means is that his friends saw him as he really was. God the Son. And they saw Jesus in all his glory. And I don't know what that looks like, but I bet it was really bright, you know? Like, really bright and really awesome. And then Jesus started talking to Two really cool guys, Moses and Elijah. You may not know who Elijah is, but I bet you know who Moses is, right? Part of the Red Sea? Yeah. So, Jesus is talking to these two, and Jesus' friends, Peter, John, and James, are so awestruck, they're so amazed. Peter says, hey, Jesus, this place, this mountain, is really cool and is really important. How about I build us some houses and we live here forever? What do you think Jesus thought of that? You might have thought it was nice, but it might ruin the mountain. And, like, sometimes they have those rampages. And yeah, avalanches, yeah. It might go like, yeah, right. That would be terrible if it fell on top of the house. And I think Jesus would agree with you that it was a nice gesture that Peter said. But in the end, Jesus had a job to do, right? And the disciples had a job to do. They needed to go out where the people were, to their friends and families and their neighbors, and tell them how much God loved them. And could they do it from a mountaintop? If I stood up on Mount Everest and you were down the, 
down at the foot. I just shouted, would you be able to hear me? No. No. They need to come down the mountain to te- You can hear everything? You would hear me? Okay, that's great. That's a cool superpower. Yeah. You're like that one girl in Encanto. Encanto? Dolores? Yes. That's, I think that's her name, right? Yeah. They had to go down to where the people were and tell them how much God loves them. And they couldn't do it from a mountaintop. I like this story because it reminds us of something. Coming to the church is really awesome, right? Yeah, you get to see your church family. You get to come up here and hang out with me. You get to go with Miss Judy and do some wonderful crafts. You get to praise God. You get to praise God. But can you stay in church forever? No. No. You have to leave eventually. You have to leave eventually. At some point, you have to go out those doors because the people that really need to hear how much God loves them they're not coming in here of their own volition, right? You have to go out there to them. And we're told by God to go out and make people aware how much God loves them. And we can't do that if we stay in here all the time. So, you can't go to school if you stay here all the time. I bet it would get a little dirty in here if we were here for like all the time. Yeah. Food would get on the floor. We'd probably start smelling because there's no showers here. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's a vacuum somewhere in here. Oh, Miss Judy has one in her class. We could use hers then. But I have homework for you this week. Okay? Here's your homework. And I bet you can do this. Your homework is to walk out the church doors. Can you do that? Yeah. Yeah. And then someday this week, tell someone how much God loves them. Can you do that? What was that? Ah, okay. So, homework, two parts. One, leave out the doors. You can do that. Two, tell someone how much God loves them. You can, you can, there's not a third one. I didn't think that far ahead. So, you can do that, right? Okay. Let's pray then, okay? Hey, God, thank you. Thank you for all that you do for us. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for our family and friends. And God, be with us as we leave the church to go out and see our neighbors, our friends, and tell them just how much God loves them. Lord, be with us now and always. Amen. Great prayer. Thank you again for the drawing. I love it. You want to go follow Miss Judy and she'll take you to the children's church? At this time, I invite the ushers to come forward to collect our tithes and our offerings.
Lord God, all that we have is a gift from you. And grant to return these, our tithes and our offerings, our first fruits. Lord, we pray for a blessing be upon them, so that they may help us as, as the body of Christ. Reach out into our community. Share your love with all. And Lord, let us never forget that. That we are called to share your love to each other, to our friends, families, to our neighbors. Lord, in your name we pray. Amen. Um, by your, bleh, sorry. You may be seated. As we enter this time of prayer, I invite, invite you to lift up before God and before the congregation names for us to pray over this week and also God's sightings so that we as a church family can celebrate all that the Lord has done for us together. And if you're joining us digitally, or we invite you to post on our Facebook wall or YouTube feed to let us know your prayer requests. And if during the week you have a prayer request, I invite you to call myself or the church office and we'll put you on the prayer list. Bill. Uh, just uh, lift up Martha, my sister Martha, my sister Janice, and my brother in law Gary, who are all home now and in prison. <laughs> all right. Prayers for Martha, prayers for Janice, and prayers for brother in law Gary. They're all home now, but they all continue to need our prayers. Gary's brother-in-law, Harold Beckner. <laughs> Prayers for Harold Beckner. He has some health issues, and he don't know exactly what's going on just yet. Judy Murphy. Continue prayers for Judy Murphy. Good to see you here with us today, Judy. Yes. Prayers for Oliver, who is being baptized today, and prayers for Oliver's parents. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Wonderful God, we come to you this day of the prayers upon our hearts. Prayers of worry, prayers of concern, prayers of hope, prayers for healing of ourselves, for, of our friends, of our families. Lord, we know you hear all. We have that promise. Lord, today we pray. We pray for our church. We pray for our church family, our brothers and sisters in Christ. We pray for those here with us today, those joining us digitally, those joining us in spirit, wherever they are. Lord, we remember that it is your spirit that binds us together. It is your spirit, the one spirit, the Holy Spirit, that fills our hearts, that let us praise your holy name. Lord, we pray that our church can continue to faithfully serve you, that we can continue to faithfully go out, share your love with our neighbors, show them what it means to be a follower of Christ, not just with our words, but with our deeds. Lord, we pray we can be there together, supporting each other in this time. And Lord, we pray for our community. We pray for our families and friends. We pray for 
our teachers, our students, the faculties and our schools. We pray for those who are sick this day. May your healing touch be upon them. And Lord, we pray that we can be there with them. A reminder of your love, a reminder that they are not forgotten. Not forgotten by you and not forgotten by us. We pray, God, that we can be the body of Christ in this corner of your creation. To be a light that shines back to you, Lord. And Lord, we pray for our nation, our world, and all the world's leaders. We pray for your wisdom upon the world's leaders this day. So that your peace, your justice may reign over the earth washing away hate, washing away injustice, so that all may know your love, Lord. Lord, we give you thanks today as well. We give thanks for our families and friends. We give thanks for the wonderful weather we've been having. We give thanks for the gift of baptism for you make us like new, where we are forgiven of our faults. But most of all, Lord, we give thanks for your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, God the Son, the Son of God, who came to earth to be with us, who died for us, was raised for us, who defeated the power that sin and death have over us. It's in his name we now pray the prayer he taught us, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, thy name, kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever.
Would you please rise and join me in the scripture reading this morning? It is taken from Matthew 17, 1 through 9. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became bright as light. Suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will set up three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground and were overcome by fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up and do not be afraid. And when they raised their eyes, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them, Tell no one about the vision until after the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. I love stories. I love movies, I love TV shows, I love novels. I devour stories all the time. And my favorite part of any story is the big reveal. You know that moment where the astronaut realizes he's been on Earth the entire time, the therapist is actually a ghost, the bad guy is actually the hero's father. You know, that big reveal moment that makes you go, what? No. What? And rewind it a couple of times, make sure you got it right. Suddenly, they're not what they seem that they were. It's a fairly universal like, though. A lot of people love the big reveal moment in any story. We love seeing the truth of who people really are. We love to know what exactly is going on in the stories we're reading and watching. We want the secrets to be revealed to us. And today's scripture reading is the gospel's big reveal. This is the moment where the truth is seen. It's the moment it becomes completely obvious that the mild man carpenter's son from Galilee is not who he seemed to be. He is something so much bigger and more awesome. Jesus reveals himself as the son of God to his friends. Yes, there are miracles and voices from heaven before, but this moment is as if Jesus stepped out of the telephone booth and revealed the giant S on his shirt. No wonder the disciples are awestruck. They now see Jesus as he truly is. And on top of that, Moses and Elijah appear, two of the greatest heroes of their faith, and they're just chatting with their best friend, like it's no big deal. John, James, and Peter are having a mountaintop moment. They are like Moses and Elijah before them. They're on top of the mountain, and they see God on high. They see all of God's glory. They're filled with amazement and joy and emotions that are beyond explaining. That's probably why Peter does what Peter does here. Peter, poor, so often used as a sermon illustration, Peter, says, hey, I'll build you a house. I'll build you a house so we can stay here forever. Seeing his teacher as the hero he truly is, just palling around with the Jewish heroes, he recognizes this is a special moment and he doesn't want this moment to end ever. He wants it to go on for eternity. He wants to bottle it up and keep it going. That's the thing about mountaintops. They're wonderful. 
mountaintops where you experience God. Mountaintops are wonderful moments and they're seductive. When I was younger, back when Indiana Conference was two conferences, back when we still wrote on stone tablets too, in the Southern Indiana Conference, we had what they called YAC, Y-A-C, Youth Annual Conference. They had YAC every year to train kids about what annual conference was going to be like. And even though I went every year, I have to say I was promised by YAC that there'd be more video games and bowling and swimming pools at annual conference. Youth Annual Conference was wonderful. It was held in French Lake. Anybody ever been to French Lake? That, okay, I'm, I thought you'd all never even heard of French Lake, but okay. It's a wonderful place. And at the end of every yak, there was always a special concert. Live music, a meaningful message. Every kid there would be raising their hands in praise. And remember, all these kids are Methodists. And they're raising their hands in worship. That is a miracle moment, everyone. It was such a powerful moment. And at the end of every yak, on the way home, we would all talk about how we would like to go back next week. We would like it to never end. It was so beautiful and so amazing. I felt more connected to those kids at yak. Kids I never even saw again than anyone else at that time. Every kid there was having a mountaintop moment. They felt the glory of God. They felt the glory of God. They felt God's presence, and they didn't want it to end. But those junior hires and high schoolers, myself, experienced is something that I I think we all chase from time to time. When I talk to people about church, people just out and about, so often what I hear people say is, I just want to go to a church that makes me experience again what I did at camp, what I did at conference, what I did at the revival service, what I did at the small group. I just want to feel that mountaintop again. We seek those moments out. And when our services, our meetings, and our conferences don't meet our expectations, we decide they're not for us. Our faith lives can so easily become chasing mountaintop moments. But those moments are important. They re-energize our faith. They empower us. They make us feel good about our faith. We feel God on the mountaintop moments. However, friends, we can't stay on the mountaintop. That's what the disciples discovered that day. Peter says, let's stay up here forever. Let's keep this moment going. And then... God the Father rings out, and they all fall to the ground. Jesus says, get up. Get up. We got work to do. And they go back down to the valley. See, there was work to be done. Their teacher had a job to do. Jesus couldn't stay up on the mountaintop because he needed to go down to the valley and show people the truth of God's love. He needed to ride a donkey into Jerusalem. He needed to be nailed to a cross, put in a tomb, and leave the tomb. The disciples had a job too. They needed to receive the Holy Spirit they needed to leave that mountaintop so they could go out into the known world and grow the church by sharing the gospel. And none of that could happen if they stayed up there, 
as they built houses and lived on top of the mountain. Friends, transfiguration was a powerful moment for them, but it was just a moment. It came and it went. They had more life to live. And more importantly, they had a call from God to share what they had experienced there with all. The truth of what they saw, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God most high. That Jesus is the culmination of every hope and dream for Messiah. That the fact that God would do all this for us, us flawed and silly people, proves that God does truly love us. And we know all these truths. Many of us, because we've had our own mountaintop experiences, the moments in our lives where we truly felt the awe-inspiring presence of God, that time when we had no doubt that God completely and eternally loves us. We feel the Holy Spirit connecting us with believers everywhere. Those moments are amazing and wonderful. And they may be for you when you were baptized, your first communion, concert. Or maybe you don't remember. Maybe you're searching your memory right now and you can't think of a time when you felt like you are on the mountaintop. Well then, friends, I pray for you that you do one day. They are awe-inspiring. It makes sense why we want every moment in our faith lives of our live lives to be exactly that. It makes sense why people chase those moments and never want them to end. Mountaintops are nice. They are the top moments of our faith. They are when we see God clearly. But friends, moments are not the sum of our faith lives. They are not the totality of what it means to be a Christ follower. We can chase them but the matter of fact is, there's a lot more valleys in our lives than mountaintops. And we are given a job to do in the valleys. A job handed up to us by our Savior to go forth into the world and make disciples. To share with everyone the love that God has shown us. To give good news to those who need it most. And in doing so, Transform the world and grow the kingdom. That is what we're meant to do and strive for every day of our lives. Live into the great commission that Jesus Christ gave us. And the fact is, we can't save souls on mountaintops. We can't share God's love to those that need it most by staying in our churches, our meetings, our camps, or what have you. Because those that need to hear the good news the most, they aren't the ones most likely to go to Christian concerts, aren't the ones likely to go to church services on their own. Those who need church the most don't come to church very often. No, they live out there in the world around us. And our goal isn't to drag them here. I know it's weird to say, but our goal isn't to drag them to worship on Sunday morning. It's not to drag them here. It's to take here out to them. It's to take what we learn here out into our communities. Share what we learn with the world. For friends, we know the truth that Jesus Christ is Lord and Jesus loves us completely, that we are forgiven people, that Jesus came to save us, not just us, but all of us. And that's news worth telling and sharing. That is news that everyone outside the church door needs to hear. And they'll never hear it if we stay inside the church door. We have to be willing to be like the disciples. Leave the mountaintops. Go into the valley. Talk to our neighbors. And share the good news. Friends, Peter wanted to stay up on the mountaintop with his friends and his heroes. He went to always bask in their glow and be awed, struck by them. But he couldn't. 
Because Jesus had a job to do. Peter had a job to do. Peter would go on to lead the disciples after Jesus ascends into heaven. Peter helped found the church universal. Let's have impulsive Peter as our example then. Let's enjoy those wonderful moments of faith. Let's embrace them, be revived by them, empowered by them. Let's remember there's other people that need to feel that too. People outside the church doors. And we need to go to them. So friends, I had told the kids, you have homework. Step one, walk out the doors. Step two, remind someone that God loves them and you love them too. Amen. Friends, we have a wonderful moment today. We will be celebrating the sacrament of holy baptism. At this time, I invite Oliver's family to come forward. And if you'd like to follow along, I do invite you to turn to your hymnals to page 39 or follow the responses on the screen. Good morning, Oliver. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift, offered to us without price. Today, presented before you, is Oliver Joseph. He is presented before us for baptism, represented by his parents. On behalf of the church, whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of, repent of your sins? If so, say, I do. I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in you, the church which Christ has opened to all people of all ages, nations, nations and races? I do. I do. Will you nurture this child, Oliver Joseph, in Christ's holy church, that by your teaching and example, he may be guided to accept God's grace for himself, to profess his faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? I will. I will. Do you, brothers and sisters, as Christ's body, the church, Reaffirm your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ. Amen. Will you nurture one another in Christian faith and life and include this child now before you in your care? Let us join together in the professing of Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the New and Old Testaments. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. 
suffer under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended into the dead. For day he arose again. He ascended into heaven, seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again in the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you slipped across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus nurtured in the waters of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection to make disciples of all nations. Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water to the one who receives it this day. To wash away his sin, to clothe him in righteousness throughout his life. That dying and being raised with Christ, he may share in his final victory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you in the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. How are you doing? Oh, Dory, we'll give you back to your dad in just a second. Oliver Joseph, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son. I know. And the Holy Spirit, I know you're wet. You'll dry off. The Holy Spirit work within you. May God bless you all the days of your life. And may you know God's love every single day. I'm going to give you back to your dad now, okay? Okay. Now it is our joy to welcome our new brother in Christ. Through baptism, you are incorporated by the Holy Spirit into Kanaz's new creation and to share in Christ's royal priesthood. We are all one in Christ Jesus. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you, members of the family of Christ. Members of the household of God, I commend this child, all for Joseph, to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase his faith, confirm his hope, and perfect him in love. God of all grace, Oliver, who has called you and us to eternal glory with God, establish you and strengthen you all the days of your life by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and peace. Amen.
Friends, I invite you to rise your able body and spirit for our closing hymn. And I invite the family of Oliver to introduce him to the church family. God bless you, Oliver. you go from here and have a wonderful restful Sabbath I pray you go from here remembering the baptism that you received in your life remembering that you are made new and that we're called to follow Christ Jesus wherever he may lead and until we see each other again I invite you to receive this blessing the Lord bless you and keep you may the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you May the Lord lift his countenance upon you. I pray for you this, that God may give you peace. Amen.